Your job, your job is to, attend, to stay on this post and watch, watch the entrance. Make sure, Make sure nothing, nothing happens, happens to you. You're never, never to leave at any exception to leave this post. This post. You may you want to go in if something happens in this situation, situation but you, you are not an entrance. Get wait, wait, wait till the rescue team comes, 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 and they'll, and they'll take, take over. over. Man, man down. Man down. Rail car down at the 15 tower. I need ERT. Repeat, I need ERT. Confined space entry can be a life and death situation. In this program, we want to focus on two of the most serious weaknesses in any permit required confined space planning and work. The first weakness is the failure to properly educate, train, and select an authorized and qualified confined space attendant. The second weakness is the failure to properly design, train for, and activate an actual working confined space rescue plan. So now let's watch and learn on how to work on safe confined space planning, entry, work, exiting, and leaving safely in good health with absolutely no injuries. Federal mining and construction industry regulatory agencies have many rules about competent and authorized attendants who by permit requirements must be placed outside a confined space. However, you the mine operators and contractors must be prepared to comply with and even exceed those rules when educating, training, and using an attendant or whole watch to use the slang term that's often used in the mining industry. Now, this is not an option. We have to have this permit to do this and have all your equipment available and staged here when we go to do this job. This is the permit. This is our hazards we have in the situation. And now we'll do the atmosphere check on this and everything and have the test and everything and write it on here on the permit. As the mine operator and or the entry supervisor, ask yourself, what kind of attendant do I want to be stationed at the entryway to the confined space if I were going to be the person working in the confined space? What kind of attendant would I want in place if my life were on the line? All right, so his straps are on good. Clip is on nice and tight. Checking this for any tears. Make sure there's no frays. Clips are on. Everything seems good to go. Let's be frank. You shouldn't go to a temporary employment firm and hire an untrained and unqualified person to work as a confined space attendant. You shouldn't hire a person who has no knowledge of the work, doesn't understand the dangers of a confined space, can't correctly communicate directly with the worker in a confined space, who can't properly read atmospheric monitoring equipment, and then actively, in an instant, call for emergency rescue assistance if it is needed. Man down, man down. Rail car down at the 15 tower. I need ERT. Repeat, I need ERT. As the mine operator and the entry supervisor, you absolutely must make sure that the attendant is trained and recognizes the hazards that may be in or adjacent to the confined space. So my task at hand is I gotta inspect the inside of the tank and check any debris or any material that may be caught down there near the door. Okay, if that's the case, then we need to be concerned with two different types of hazards. One being engulfment, and then secondly, while you're down there, slips, trips, and falls. As the entry supervisor, 
you must verify that this person is able to comprehend and understand oxygen deficiency, flammable or combustible gases, vapors, toxic gases, high noise levels, extreme temperatures, poor lighting, and the potential for the entrant to be engulfed by solids or liquids. Is this person aware of and can they recognize the possible adverse behavioral effects on the authorized entrant that these environmental hazards may cause? Will the attendant help confirm proper ventilation is provided in the confined space prior to entry? Can this attendant read and understand external atmospheric monitoring equipment that is constantly evaluating the confined space atmosphere? This is the air monitor device that we're going to be using. Um, we'll have a worm uh, attached to it. I want you to monitor this for me and let me know if it goes off. That way I can get it out of the hole, okay? Yes, sir. Do you know what the alarm would sound like if it went off? Yes, sir. There would be two or three beeps. Is the attendant capable of maintaining constant communication with the entrant? Mic check. Mic check. Can you hear me clearly? Can you hear me clearly? Copy your mic check. I can hear you loud and clearly. Can you hear me clearly? Can this attendant enforce and prevent non-approved workers from entering the space? Will this attendant stay in the appointed monitoring position at all times while the authorized entrant is in the confined space? Your job as an attendant is to stay on this post and watch the entrant, make sure nothing happens to him. You're never to leave, at any exception, leave this post. The only ones going in are ERT, and that's only if I call them. Nobody else goes in. Is this person capable of assessing the condition of the entrant person and to request an immediate evacuation of the confined space if an evacuation alarm sounds and or the entrant suffers ill effects? If the interior or exterior conditions become hazardous, or if any activity inside or outside the space endangers the entrant, will this attendant order an immediate self-evacuation by the entrant? Is this person capable of assisting in a self-rescue, non-entry rescue, or entry rescue of the authorized entrant? By now you realize you've got to properly train, educate, and use authorized and qualified attendants for permit required confined space entry tasks. If you take any shortcuts with attendance, you may very well be signing the death certificate of the actual authorized entrant in a confined space. Let's shift gears and move to the role of an authorized and qualified attendant in a rescue plan. Again, as we've said, incomplete and non-practice rescue plans are one of the greatest dangers in permit required confined space work. Our goal is to eliminate faulty plans and instead create life-saving rescue plans on your job sites, at your locations. So for the confined space entry work ahead, you as job foreman have checked the box on the proper form that says, yes, we have a rescue plan. You're talking to the attendant in training, the entrant, and the other workers, but then along comes the entry supervisor. All right, guys, we're going to make this confined space entry today to test the integrity of the structure itself. Hey, Jim, how you doing? Hey, good. How about good yourself? Good to see you. You guys getting ready to enter the uh, confined space? Yeah, we're fixing to make an entry on, on this space. Good deal. Uh, have you practiced this before and you got right? You got all the equipment? We've, we've got all the equipment, we've got our plan laid out, but no, we haven't practiced with this specific equipment before. Okay, uh, if you don't mind, let me step back and just kind of observe and sure, see how y'all are doing. Thanks. Absolutely. Now you're back to discussing more details about the confined space entry and you're emphasizing to your team in the event of an emergency entry rescue procedure We'll call the local EMS and the fire department for the rescue professionals. The entry supervisor now steps in and he speaks. Um, did I hear you say earlier that uh, it takes about 30, 35 minutes for the fire rescue to join us? I believe so. 
um, I think it's a little too far. Um, so we, you know, we could be endangering Pete's life at that point because he's going to be the entrant in here, and we need to get to him a lot faster than that. The entry supervisor goes into more detail. Let's just call the funeral home and the hearse to come pick up the entrant worker's body now. And surprise, you look at him and you say, well, what do you mean? The supervisor answers, if this worker is trapped in this vessel and he passes out due to a lack of oxygen, within four to six minutes the brain is damaged, and within 15 minutes due to excess carbon dioxide and other vapors in the vessel, he may be dead. The supervisor continues, EMS and the fire department are at least 30 to 45 minutes away from this mine site, and again, their travel time and the delay may kill the worker. So let's just start over right now. So you and the supervisor draw up a rescue plan with three columns and possible actions. There are columns for a self-rescue, a non-entry rescue, and an entry rescue. It is important to note that you will now use an authorized attendant, a dispatcher, certified first aider, and retrieval system operators. They will be your employees, properly trained and authorized to perform the different rescue plan segments. In each case, you will have determined what the hazardous or unknown inside atmosphere may be. You will have confirmed proper ventilation is provided in the confined space prior to entry. In the self-rescue plan of action, you measure one of the openings and determine that the entrant could crawl into and exit the horizontal concrete pipe at the opening under his own power. Now he's got the proper PPE, which includes a full body harness with lanyard, and he needs no more equipment to exit than this. The attendant will have a device with mechanical advantage on standby. The communication system, the atmospheric monitoring device, and alarm will be in place in the event of a dangerous atmosphere occurring. You've tested the atmosphere and it's determined to be non-hazardous. The only additional persons needed will be the authorized attendant, the dispatcher, and the first aider who will assist at the exit opening. You simulate an incident occurring and you now have the entrant actually practice the exit under his own power. Any first aid will be performed outside the space. In the event of a non-entry rescue, you determine that the trained authorized attendant, the qualified dispatcher, the certified first aider, and the retrieval system operators will be used. The communication system is in place. Testing, testing, one, two, three, everybody copy. The alarm will sound if the atmospheric conditions warrant. A clear path, full body harness, lanyard with spreader bar, and retrieval system with mechanical advantage will be used. The rescue team will ensure that the entire body, and especially the head, will not be hooked on an obstruction. You now practice the non-entry rescue procedure, ensuring that the attendant, the dispatcher, the first aider, and the retrieval system operators all perform their rescue roles and there is no injury to the entrant from the rescue procedure. All first aid will be performed in the outside space. Finally, you define an entry rescue. Now here again, the authorized attendant, the dispatcher, the first aider, and the retrieval system operators are required. In this case, the communication system and the alarm monitoring system are in place. Radio check, everybody copy, one, two, three. An incident will be simulated and the authorized and trained retrieval team will don the proper PPE for the environment, which may include supplied air systems, masks, and other specialized equipment. To practice, you now have the retrieval team properly enter the vessel where the worker is. Here. They will stabilize the victim, perform inside first aid, which is going to be limited to airway kept open and gross bleeding controlled, and preventing dust or other contaminants from getting in the patient's eyes. The entrant will then be properly taken out of the vessel 
and any further first aid will be performed. You've just seen real life, completely written, practiced, and tested confined space rescue plans. The appropriate authorized and qualified attendants, dispatchers, and retrieval system operators were all used. Instead of just checking a box on a form that says we have a plan, you need to develop a plan like the ones you've seen. Also, in the process, we've demonstrated requirements for an authorized and qualified attendant used in confined space entry. Use the properly authorized and qualified attendant, authorized entrant, and practice rescue plan to safely enter, work in, and depart confined spaces with absolutely no accidents or injuries in your facility and your workplace.